Do you know what Metallica, Steve Vai, Ugly Kid Joe and Van Halen all have in common? Well, it's this instrument. This is electric sitar by Dan Electro and it's a very interesting and odd looking instrument and I've always been fascinated by it since uh, since it came to my knowledge back in the 90s when I um, had um, For the Love of God by Steve Vai and um, I was wondering uh, what is this uh, weird instrument I, I thought that it's just a regular sitar but um, then I went online and I found this and I was so fascinated by it that uh, I really, I really dreamed about this instrument since the 90s. And uh, it got uh, discontinued at some time and I lost any hope that I could ever uh, acquire this instrument. But luckily Dan Electro reissued this uh, beautiful and exotic weird thing a couple of years ago so I found it on Toman and of course uh, I <laughs> I finally got it so uh, first a little bit of uh, story about this instrument that I will go quickly through the specs and then I will play something for you um, so this thing was designed in 1962 by um, Vinnie Bell, who was a New York based session guitar player and uh, he was uh, well known for um, experimental approach to guitar effects and things like that and you know since in the 60s there's this uh, cultural revolution and uh, Indian culture uh, influence a lot of the Western world and um, you know many artists like um, Beatles and Rolling Stones and uh, many others are starting implementing Indian instruments like sitar or tabla or uh, all kinds of other exotic things and um, Vinnie Bell together with uh, Dan Electro they came up with this weird thing which essentially is a guitar but the interesting thing is that it has this weird bridge here which is um, technically it's uh, almost the same as the bridge on the original sitar it's uh, actually uh, a flat surface that uh, strings are going over and inside the bridge there are some uh, plates or something I couldn't actually find uh, the tilt construction of this bridge but uh, there are some tiny plates inside that vibrate and they create this weird sound and uh, the other thing that contributes to this sound is uh, the sympathetic strings which normally aren't designed to be played but only to vibrate so uh, essentially if I play something without them and then with them you see that they definitely give a much richer sound and this is the purpose of, of uh, putting these strings together. There is also uh, another version of uh, the sitar which is without these strings. It, it's cheaper and it uh, resembles a little bit more the original shape of the sitar but I like this one more because it's uh, it's more versatile, it's more, in, more interesting and uh, it's oddly looking and I've got passion for such things. So, um, probably you've heard this instrument uh, in even more, more songs that you originally taught and I just mentioned just some notable examples, for example, uh, as I said, Metallica. <laughs> Of 
course, for the love of God. Also, uh, Van Halen, as I said, uh, and talking about love, the solo actually has this instrument underneath the lead guitar. And of course, it doesn't have Wami Bar, but uh, yeah. And another very, very prominent usage of this instrument is uh, Cats in the Cradle. And also you can hear it in bands like, uh, yes, Genesis, Mike Oldfield as well. So. It definitely is a prog instrument. So uh, now I will go through the specs and then I will play something from my stuff for for this instrument. So um, it has a pretty much a regular guitar neck. It's uh, to me it feels pretty much like a Stratocaster neck and it has slightly bigger uh, headstock as you can see it's like like Stratocaster headstock but slightly extended downwards um, it has uh, 21 frets which is pretty much standard thing back in the 60s uh, the neck is C-shape uh, it feels very comfortable actually um, very good to make I could say I mean it's uh, very well uh, done it has a nice texture um, the neck is standard uh, 648 millimeter scale or 25.5 uh, inches uh, the fretboard is uh, pao ferro which is essentially something that's quite similar to the rosewood but as i said in uh, my previous video about my uh, eight string ibanez the rosewood is endangered species and that's why uh, brands are finding another solutions for using a similar type of woods for fretboards and uh, this uh, power ferro wood is essentially very very similar to rosewood it's slightly more reddish a little bit brighter and a little bit more dense uh, compared to the rosewood and it's a little bit brighter to a certain degree it resembles maple uh, maple fretboard in terms of sound uh, the rest that we have is a very interesting body, uh, which is a poplar body and it's actually shallow. Hollow, actually, <laughs> not shallow. Uh, it resonates like an acoustic guitar pretty much, all, although it doesn't have a resonance shape. Uh, resonance hole, <laughs> talking crap. Um, so these things here are basically guards so you don't uh, put your hands uh, hand on top of the resonance strings because they start from here, this is the bridge underneath this plastic thing here and here another one which is down here which is essentially like a normal pick guard uh these are these are not very rigid though so if you if you buy one of these you should be careful because i think it could be very easily broken um but nevertheless it looks cool um we've got uh, alnico lipstick uh, pickups two two pickups here one for the sympathetic strings and they have separate controls so each of them has a volume and uh, tone control 
so it's quite a versatile option. You can find very different uh, sounds there. Uh, the finish is uh, very, very nice. I'm not sure how much you can see it probably on the back. It's visible better. Uh, it's a uh, red crackle finish, this is how it's described. It looks very nice, I, I really like it and it's also... Um, it feels very nice, it's like um, a very strange exotic texture. Um, the sympathetic strings uh, normally they recommend it to be tuned like D F sharp uh, G A C A G F sharp uh, G A C D D, which essentially forms the D major seven sus four chord, and they recommend to tune uh, the sixth string down to D, so it's essentially drop D. I'm not particularly sure why they decided to do it like that, but uh, my first thought is that it will be very handy to to play uh, this thing. Eh, not very precise, but you get the idea. Although Norwegian wood that I just played is actually played on real sitar, not on this one, but uh, nevertheless it uh, still sounds uh, quite nice, I must say. Um, I personally prefer to tune the sympathetic strings to G major scale. because this allows me to play uh, them along with um, with the other one. Some stupid improvisation. Uh, well, I think it's a very, very interesting uh, instrument and I'm very happy that I could uh, have it. I think it's a very good make, uh, although uh, these strings are a little bit mm, painful experience to tune and uh, they are tuned with this uh, pipe type of uh, key and it's very tricky to make them at the correct pitch and every time if you decide to change tuning there are uh, 13 of them here so it's just really not a really pleasant thing to do but essentially you sign for it when you get this instrument so uh, you'll reap what you sow as they say and uh, now I could play just uh, some piece for you that I composed for my upcoming album. By the way, uh, it's coming at the beginning of the next year, so uh, stay in tune and subscribe to my channel and click the bell button to get informed when I upload new video. Also visit my uh, my Facebook page and follow me on Instagram so you get notified when I actually release this album. Uh, so...
that's everything uh, about this sitar that I could possibly tell you. Um, it's available uh, on Toman. It's uh, about 730 something euro without the case and you can also get it with a case and it becomes like 800 something. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a beautiful instrument. I like it at all. If you're interested in um, essentially acquiring a odd and exotic instrument, this one is for you, definitely. Uh, so that's everything for this video. If you like what I do, uh, consider supporting me on Patreon up here or on the links down in the description. And also subscribe to my channel and click that bell notification button to get informed when I upload new video. See you next time and stay safe. Bye bye.